Would you please welcome Chloe Hayden? <laughs> Chloe, so great to see you. You look absolutely gorgeous, as per usual, bright and colourful, putting a smile on all of our faces. You have so much going on. And now a new podcast called Boldly Me. Tell us all about it. So on Boldly Me, I interview people who are living bold and are being completely authentically themselves. For such a long time, we've only seen one version of normality and one way to be a human. And that changed my perspective of myself for a very, very, very long time growing up. And I think it is well time that both young people who are different and that don't see themselves in traditional media and human beings in society in general that we see a change and that we see humans that are themselves and that are living authentically and that don't fit into the stereotype because not fitting into the stereotype is magical and it's time that we start promoting that. Um, pretty ordinary lineup you've got. Ned Brockman, Grace Tame, Dylan Alcott. Yes. <laughs> uh, who's your favourite? Um, I... <laughs> My favourite person in the entire universe is Tim Minchin. I oh, yeah. think that he is just, like, the reincarnation of, like, Mozart and Picasso and... Is Tim on the series? He is on it. And yeah. I, like, ugly cried, like, snot, tears, <laughs> mucus. Like, I was bawling when I found out. So that was pretty sick. You'll get a very big head hearing this. <laughs> he will get a big head knowing this. As he should. <laughs> <laughs> you on Dylan Olcott's podcast, Listenable, there are not many people that can out-chat Dilsey. <laughs> you know, I was selectively mute until I was 16, so I'm making up for lost time now. <laughs> what was that chat like? Because it was so engaging. You two I just chatting, love just Dylan. back. There, Dylan is such an incredible human being and we get along so well. I think we have such a similar sense of humour and also such a similar way of viewing our disabilities and viewing how we need to change society. So it's it's brilliant to be able to talk to someone else that is doing such incredible things, not just in the sporting realm, but for disability access as a whole as well. You ask your guests which Disney character they would be. Why do you ask that question? Growing up, I wasn't able to see myself represented in the media anywhere. So I clung to these Disney characters. They were my representation in a world where I couldn't see real versions of myself. I saw myself in these anthropomorphised animals and these princesses who had a yucky once upon a time and not in spite of their differences but because of their differences were able to create a happily ever after. So which Disney character are you? I think I would be Anna from Frozen or Vanellope von Sweets from Wreck-It Ralph. Oh, nice. <laughs> I think famously I'm Jafar, so that's... Um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yours are better. Yours are better. <laughs> Um, obviously, you've had such huge success with um, Heartbreak High yes. um, and it's just gone global. Obviously, you know, millions and millions and millions of people watching it. What do you think it is about this remake that um, is, is making people so passionate about the show? Young people are seeing themselves for the first time and the stories that are being told are being told by the voices that need to be the ones telling them. I think Heartbreak is doing something which a lot of shows don't wear minority groups, we've got um, Indigenous people, we've got disabled people, we've got non-binary people and we're in the room, we're telling our stories and I think it's very, very obvious that the stories that we're seeing on screen are the same stories that are being told behind the camera. It is also so funny. It is such a funny, like, smart series. I've, I loved it. I've been Thank you. Thank you very much. There are plans now for season two. Can you let us know... What's happening? You know, anything? He's asking for a spoiler. Can you let us know anything? <laughs> Any kind of... Do you want me to get fired? Of course. I mean, for this, of course. No, <laughs> oh, sick. Oh, I'll join the project. Thank you. Cool. I'll let you guys know afterwards. <laughs> it, it sounds like from all the different things you're doing, that this idea of uh, seeing different people on screen or in the media or listening to them on podcasts and radio is obviously important to you. Mm -hmm. What difference do you think it makes for the sort of younger version of you? It makes the world of difference. If I had have seen myself represented growing up, I wouldn't have grown up thinking that I wasn't supposed to be here. The media has such a massive hold in the way that we view society and humans and particularly minority groups. Young girls and young people in general grow, grow up not seeing themselves whether that be in people at their school or people that they see on the television or in podcasts or in books that they read, and they go, well, if I can't see myself, am I a glitch? Am I supposed to be here? Yeah. Seeing themselves, seeing themselves represented, changes the trajectory of their lives and changes the fact that they now know that they are supposed to exist and that they do hold value by who they are. That's amazing, firstly, but it's also a huge responsibility for one person to have the feeling of that on their shoulders. Are you enjoying this? 
I love every second of what I do. I wouldn't be doing something if I didn't love it. But I do think that it is time that every single one of us steps up to the plate. It isn't just disabled people's jobs or minority groups' jobs to be the ones that are advocating. It is a group effort and we all need to step up to the plate. Absolutely agree, Chloe. I've got a really good mate of mine. Her son's just been diagnosed with autism. They said, do you want the diagnosis? And I spoke about you being on the show. She's like, we love Chloe because my son will grow up and see Chloe being authentically you. So thank you so much, Chloe. Chloe's podcast, Boldly Me, launches on Wednesday, April 26th. Please thank Chloe Hayden.